A wise man once said, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. As I said in our last episode, Star Wars D20 attempted to please both D6 fans and rope in new fans of the new D20 system. In doing so, they only succeeded in pissing off both. The unfortunate side of this, as well as the growing animosity from the OGL bubble, made any second attempt a hard sell. Saying, we're gonna try again, raises the unflattering question of, why did you screw up the first time? Many factors can play into that, obviously, but the fact of the matter is it's hard to get back that audience trust. After all, it takes years to gain a customer, and seconds to lose one. My point is that the failings of Star Wars D20 were going to create problems for any successor like a domino effect. Regardless, Saga Edition arrived in 2007 by Christopher Perkins, Owen Casey Stevens, and Rodney Thompson. Unlike its predecessor, it only lasted for three years and put out significantly less material in that time. Now, was that apprehension unwarranted? Let's find out. Presentation-wise, Saga Edition has a fairly solid and much improved setup to its predecessor. There's far less blue on the pages and the writing is much clearer to the eye. However, it does have its own quirks. The format is in a near square page size instead of the standard A4 format that's used, well, everywhere. It certainly makes it an easier read, but it gives off a kind of coffee table vibe, for lack of a better term. Also, there's one massive elephant in the room. This book has a lot of reused art, many of it being from Revised. In a few cases, it used the same artwork in different parts of the same book. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but it is a factor that's hard to ignore nonetheless. In addition, it could be argued that the book is a bit light on content at only 289 pages, considering the vastness of the Star Wars universe. I'd say the presentation is overall a net positive, but there's a few cracks in the armor nonetheless. While this version technically uses the D20 system, calling it Star Wars D&D like last time is a bit of a stretch, as there are a lot of changes between Revised and Saga. We'll cover the bulk of these changes in the mechanics section, but bear in mind there will be some repetition, since some are tied to character creation and some are not. That said, let's return to the example we've been using throughout this series of The Young Jedi. The first step is ability scores, which work pretty much exactly the same as before. Thus we have a strength of 18, dexterity 12, Constitution 15, Intelligence 16, Wisdom 11, and Charisma 8. Second step is choosing a species. Much like last time, we're going with Human, which grants a bonus trained skill and a bonus feat. Third step is picking a class. This time around, there's just one Jedi class, but with the new talent tree system, the Jedi is more of a formation rather than a specific role. This time, the Jedi class grants us the following features. 32 hit points, 5 force points, plus 1 to fortitude, reflex, and will defense, plus 1 to attacks, 6 train skills from the following list, acrobatics, endurance, initiative, knowledge, perception, pilot, and use the force, a lightsaber, and the following feats, force sensitivity, weapon proficiency in lightsabers, and weapon proficiency in simple weapons, along with our human bonus feat. In addition, one talent from either the Jedi Counselor, Jedi Guardian, Jedi Sentinel, lightsaber combat, or the Force Talent Tree. And last but not least, 1,200 credits to spend on equipment. Taking these into account, we make the following picks. For skills, we picked Acrobatics, Initiative, Jump, Mechanics, Perception, and Use the Force. For a talent, we went with Lightsaber Defense. And as our bonus feat, we chose Force Training, because this grants us a Force Power, in this case, Battle Strike. Finally, concerning equipment, we're going with the same relative equipment as before. A Blaster Pistol, an All-Temperature Cloak, a med pack, a hip holster, five power packs, and a bandolier. The only real downside with this setup is that it's a bit unoptimized for the mechanics of Saga Edition, but it's still serviceable to the theme all the same. This is unfortunately a consequence of what ability scores the two systems favor, as well as demonstrating how Saga Edition is a very, very vast reworking of its predecessor. But optimization issues aside, character creation this time is a breeze. Because of the freeform nature of leveling being eccentric on talent trees and feats, it's possible to have two characters of the same class who feature few, if any, class talents. That said, force use can be min-maxed if someone knows what they're doing. This is because many force-sensitive classes can have some feature that allows the use the force skill to be a substitute for other skills. Granted, this isn't nearly the same level of overpower that Jedi classes had in Revised, but it could easily annoy the hell out of other players and or the GM. While this game still uses the D20 system, it's more akin to D20 Modern than D&D. Some of the changes are as follows, and bear in mind there's a lot of them. Vitality and Wounds have been dropped in lieu of standard hit points. 
plus a starting amount before adding in hit dice, making for significantly higher HP values. In addition, a condition track is added that adds penalties akin to a typical wound system, where characters take damage from a single attack above their damage threshold. Static class features have been dropped in favor of the talent tree system that was used in D20 Modern. This reduces the classes down to five, with Jedi, Noble, Scoundrel, Scout, and Soldier, each having at least three talent trees, with more added through prestige classes. Saving throws are treated as defenses, akin to how D&D 4th Edition would handle this, though in the process, defense, aka armor class, is removed. As a result, armor replaces your heroic bonus, making it only necessary at early levels or with the appropriate features. Characters have a bonus to defenses equal to their level in heroic classes, and half their level to skills. Speaking of skills, skill points have been eliminated. Instead, you have a set of trained skills that gain a plus 5 bonus to skill rolls. Multiple attacks have been divorced from attack progression. In other words, no additional attack every 5 points of basic attack bonus. Instead, they're covered by their own feats double attack and triple attack. Force powers have been reworked between the skill-feat dichotomy that drained vitality previously. Instead, force powers are per-encounter abilities based on a use-the-force roll. In addition, dark side points have been removed in favor of dark side powers and a score equal to your wisdom. Force points can still act as they did before, but they can also be used to enhance the effects of force powers. In service to the lore of Star Wars, a destiny system has been added that creates a pool of extra effort points equal to your level, with a lasting benefit after one completes their listed destiny. Finally, plus two bonuses have been minimized in favor of allowing situational rerolls. Saga Edition is a massive improvement from Revised. Dropping the idea of Star Wars meets D&D, and instead building it around BEING Star Wars. As I said in a previous musing, it's a kind of predecessor to D&D 4th Edition's mechanics, with some aspects of D20 Modern. However, in trying to incorporate the movies, some of the games, and the comic books, the series went everywhere at once after a while. There weren't any books that were specifically dedicated to one aspect so one could feasibly have abilities from multiple source books at once. What I think they should have done is something similar to the Complete series that D&D 3rd Edition did, or the Power series from D&D 4th Edition, having books on setting be their own matter entirely. There's also the possibility that Lucasfilm still had its book cap that it did previously, but I don't have any evidence on that, so that's mere speculation. What isn't speculation, however, is the fact that 4th edition D&D came out in 2008, and obviously that was going to consume the majority of their resources. With that in mind, it's no surprise that the system was only able to last for about three years. Thus, Wizards handed off the license to someone else. This time, it went to Minnesota-based Fantasy Flight Games, but that is a story for another day.